Great to see all of you today. I'm going to bring up Zoom in just um, our Facebook in just a moment. Um, we have uh, two great um, artists with us today. We have Mark from um, Canada, and we have Jonathan from Africa, but right now transmitting from France. So welcome to both of you. So Thank you very much, John. You it's are true. so welcome. We look forward to uh, what you're going to show us. And um, if you have questions as viewing, please um, uh, go ahead and ask. You are, all of you are just so polite. Sometimes it's, um, the artist will ask, is everybody still there? Just because you're, you're just so you know, intensely watching. So welcome to both of you. Um, which one of you would like to start first? Mark, you are good to go. Okay, I'll Mark. Start. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, I when I was uh, asked to be a brand ambassador, like all the other brand ambassadors, we asked eighteen colors for a dot card, and um, yeah, it, it's not easy. But um, I gave it a try, and I got it down to forty-one colors, um, and then. And to work it down from there. So what I was thinking is, how do I choose these colors? And the only way I could really choose them was the colors that are, um, are, are well, fit in my, my style of, 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 of paintings and colors that are maybe less used, but I think they're brilliant. So um, I'll show you here. You can go down to my um my board that's my dot card um and i managed to swatch the lines across here right across there we go so my paintings i like painting abstract landscapes and i like painting cars so the important things to me was what goes well with those and and what I love is the vibrancy of color. So the problem I have is I'm a pigment nerd. I love pigment and it all starts with pigments with me. Um, when I get a new color, it's like a new best friend. And uh, you, know, you take it and you try and use it with all different colors. And these are the colors that um, I use most often with my abstract landscapes and with, um, uh, with, uh, with painting cars. And it does, I do find it very funny that um, the major industry for, for pigments is the car industry. And here I am painting cars. Mm -hmm. so. All right, so I'll start here. This is buff titanium. And the, the reason why I use it quite a lot is because it's a, I think of it as an unbleached white. And it's a little bit opaque, but it, um, you can add it to any other color and it just, dims it down a bit, takes its, its, its vibrancy away. So it's a good way of just um, lowering the, the, the chroma of, of a color. Having said that, I love high chroma colors. I like the vibrant colors, as you, as you can see here. Uh, Aussie red gold, um, lovely, um, lovely mass tone. And, and also you can get it down to a nice little wash there. And again, for colors, that's brilliant. Organic vermilion. It's a nice, soft red to orange. Again, it goes very well and it mixes lovely, it's a lovely transparent color. Pyrrole red, because I paint a lot of Italian cars and some of them are very, very red. That's my go-to red. Um, Indenture and blue. Indenture and blue is very much a color that I see around me here in, 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 um, in Nova Scotia where I live because we, at, at night when the clouds are low and the color of the sky, it's literally like that. When you see the clouds and you see the dark sky, it, it just, it's, it's just that color to the T. So light genuine, it's a lovely granulating color and it mixes so well with other colors and I'll show that later as well. Thalo blues are the thalos. I call the thalos the Muhammad Ali's of watercolor because they can float like a butterfly or they can sting like a bee, whichever way you want them. And to me, um, you can see float, the sting like a bee can be nice and deep and rich. And then when you float like a butterfly, you can get a lovely, 
um, soft color out of them. King's Royal Blue, I use quite a lot for the sky now. I used to use iridescent uh, blue, but uh, it was a toss up between the two of them and King's Blue one. It's a little bit uh, granulating, but it, it makes a nice blue sky. Cobalt teal, uh, what can you say? It's one of the most beautiful colors out there. And it goes, you can see a lot of colors of cars like that. Um, and you, I just can't mix that color. I just can't seem to find the right mixture. It's just out the tube, it's just brilliant. Thalo turquoise, another uh, thalo. Again, for cars, it's brilliant. Um, likewise with thalo yellow green. Um, also uh, very, very vibrant and you got that deep um, variation between soft and, and, and the, the mass tone. And um, it's, there's a certain other Italian car that's very much this color as well. Serpentine Genuine, when this one granulates, it is the most beautiful color because it separates into like a green to a brown to almost like a, I get a hint of purple there. Uh, it's just divine. When burns orange, well, cars rust. <laughs> so that is my go-to rust color. Um, and I use that with a little bit of Aussie green, uh, Aussie red gold as well um, for, for rust. Undersea green, this was a toss up, but I included it because it is such a versatile color. You can use it for landscapes as I do, and you can use it for um, aquascapes. I think Caroline uses it quite a lot as, as well. And it, it separates lovely. Green gold, nice and strong. Um, that when it comes down to that, uh, that wash, it just, uh, it sings and I use it a lot. Naphthamine maroon, I hope I said that correctly. This I use in my landscapes quite a lot, but in cars, on the older cars, but uh, naphthamine maroon, it, it, it's very, it, it's a maroon, but it's on the earth side of maroons to me. And when you mix it with the other colors, um, it, it, it becomes like, like rocks and, um, and foliage. Tigers are genuine. I included this one not because it's just a, a beautiful color granulates lovely as well. But the other thing is that I'm from South Africa and I grew up with um, tiger's eye everywhere. We had it on window frames, well not window frames, on, on, um, um, on frame, painting frames, on, on little trinkets and everything. So. To my heart, that's uh, that's an important color to me. And then Luna Black, well, everything goes well with Luna Black. It just makes everything better. And uh, it's a great color that you can experiment so many and um, different things and get so many different results. So that's why I chose Luna Black. And, and maybe I'll just show you a few of my works that I've done that will there. So this one I think is not one of those colors, but it's uh, that's the kind of things I like doing the cars. And this one we got the um, Aussie Aussie red gold. Um, certain red cars, like I said, um, and I love painting them. This one is a. Uh, um, it's actually a wash, <laughs> but uh, it's the same colors and I do love them very much. Uh, what else is there? Mark, did you say that was a Ferrari? I wouldn't want to say the Ferrari, but yes, it's a Ferrari. Wow. Uh, yes. Really? Uh, I love, I love uh, Ferraris, yeah. And actually, I'll show you here. Yeah, this is what is on my desk. It's a Ferrari. Oh, which I've had wow. since I was a teenager. <laughs> Do you have one at your door? <laughs> oh, no. Um, all I can afford are the, those Ferraris is the paint, the pyro red. <laughs> Mark, I love the organic vermilion in the lighter washes on that car, like on the highlights, how, yeah. how it can wash out to like a lovely pink color. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. As you say, it's got a very a pinkish tone to it. Um, and then you mix it with a bit of neutral tint and it gets you nice and deep there and it's just, yeah, a lovely color. 
Um, this is what? Oh, this is an NG. This is the Thalo turquoise. And then added a bit of yellow. Um, and then that's the chrome. And the thing about cars is that um, they are reflective. So they have a color of their own, but they'll always reflect if they're clean. They'll always reflect what's uh, around them. So you'll always get a reflection and you can pick up those different colors. And that's a bit of fun as well. Mark, I think it's just so interesting how you, you paint cars. I, I just think the different things we paint are choose to paint are so interesting. I just love these paintings of the cars. Yeah, I think um, it's one, it's my only rule in, in watercolor is that you've got to paint what you love. Because if oh, you yeah. paint what you love, you'll love what you paint and then you'll yeah. paint some more. So, you know, I think we've all gone down that, that journey of, of different um, genres and uh, you're just going to find the genre then, and the things that you like doing. Oh yeah, these are so cool. Yeah. Mark, I saw on your Instagram recently, you went to a car show and did a little plein air painting. Um, no, I didn't do any plein air painting. It was way no. too hot. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I you got some really good reference photos, though. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I got. Um, yeah, I got a lot of. That's why I went there because there's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, photos taken, so I can I can uh, take you know do some paintings. Again, like I said, the parallel red. This is the. Uh, I like this. Com the these are complementary colors: the imperial purple and the thalo, uh, thalo yellow green, um, and it looks acidic. Yeah, it's, it's just so strong and beautiful. Like a comic um, from a comic from a Japanese comic book. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going for. Something more um, abstract, and this one is the parallel red. Um, what I didn't mention is that there are a range of colors on my list that are um, staining colors. And that's uh, quite important to me, especially like the thalos, because if you've got a staining color, you can layer them quite um, successfully. And that's what I did with this one here. So there's quite a lot of um, layers of um, pyrrole red, um, making, uh, making the, going into darker spots there, and then also some yellow bringing into the light. Um, cobalt teal, just love it. Um, it's there more cobalt teal. Maybe I'm showing too much here, but yeah, um, just some car details. And then I love doing chrome as well, it's a lot of fun. It's a thalo, um, thalo blue. Um, this is just a sample of some lunar black and uh, Quinn Burns Orange, just the two colors together. And then I can just show you some of my, um, the way I use them in the abstract art, in abstract landscapes. So very much, um, you see how strong the um, thalo yellow green is and a uh, bit of the um, naphthamide maroon. And, you, and the, when they're coming like this, they just uh, complement each other beautifully. And this is using them full tilt. Like I say, I do love my high chroma colors. Um, spray them up and just let them, them run everywhere in the uh, abstracts. Again there. And this is uh, very much an abstract one. This is actually uh, Mayan dark blue and the Thalo turquoise. Um, wow, that is fantastic, this Thalo turquoise. And the other blue, you said it was Mayan, dark blue? Mayan, yeah, Mayan dark blue. Uh-huh. Fabulous yeah. combination. Wow. Yeah. Imagine that, another red car. Um, yeah, it's one I've done fairly recently, another Ferrari. And I just want to show you this one because this is the Naftaman Maroon. Bring it into the sky and uh, the thalo yellow coming in there. And I think this one's a bit of the Mayan dark blue again. And that's fairly recently again, just um, splashing some colors together. Um, I tend to use them quite a lot, as you can see in the, in the landscapes. And uh, I love these because they're just free. You can just 
paint and you can uh, see how they react together. And every time you do, you get a different result. Um, so it's a lot of fun. So yeah, that's all I have to show. <laughs> that's my dot card. Very nice. Mark, would you be willing to tell us a little bit about the choice, the color choices you made based on transparency or opacity? How you um, thought through that problem solving for, for what you needed, which is landscapes and cars, as I hear. <laughs> yeah, the main thing was um, the stain to me. Let's get this back here. Um, and then with, with the staining comes the transparency because... Um, you'll see the, the, uh, the, the thalos, very transparent, very staining, and it works brilliantly. Uh, organic vermilion, just because it's just the best ever. Um, so yeah, um, that's the ones I, I like choosing, yeah. But you've also had the serpentine and the sodalite, which are very granulating. Yes. And lunar. Um, yeah, because Soda lights, um, I can show you, probably mix it up. Um, when you take a nice granulating solid color like that and you mix it with one of the nice transparent colors, you get an amazing result. In fact, one of my favorite mixes is the organic vermilion and soda light. You mix those together and I call it uh, Dante's Inferno and I think I've said that before because uh, it's just, it, it's the color of, uh, of, uh, of a fireplace or a, a rich, uh, a fire, roaring fire. So yeah. All right. Take could opinion. you could you please show us how you do, would you would do that? Do sure, you do that. Love to see that. Sure. Okay. So yeah, that's the idea of mixing. Um, let me uh, take the machine. Yeah. Mixing. Marcus, another quick question: Do you? Uh, or have you done commission people pieces of people's cars? That would be a, a good opportunity. You do such a great job. You know, I, I actually haven't. <laughs> I haven't really marketed myself. Uh, probably something I need to do properly. Um, but yeah, um, that's my, uh, that's the way I want to go. But uh, I don't know, every time I fall in love with the painting, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's, that's one of my, my things. So I'll show you here, this is just my palette and I'll just show you, I got the, um, the colors from the dark card all laid out in the half pan. I, uh, I do use the, um, the tubes when I use the, uh, when I make a, an abstract landscape, but generally if I'm using, um, using them for a, a car or something like that, I will use them in my half pans just so that I can separate them so I can, you know, group them together and focus on those colors. Oh, and I must point out that uh, some of my colors are, these colors are actually in the tubes. In the, 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 the plants. So let me see, uh, you, we'll do a quick one with uh, organic vermilion. And we said, all right, there we go. Mark, do you mostly paint from model cars or do you paint from real cars? I, I try to paint from real cars, yeah. um, local sources. Um, but I can tell you, I get, it might sound funny, but I get my source material from a game. <laughs> um, there's very good uh, racing games these days. Um, and inside them, they have a photo mode. And that sounds funny, but the cars are very, very well detailed. Oh, funny. And I can get the car in the game, go into photo mode, and I can spend how much time right and get the photos that oh, I want. Oh, that's great. Love it. <laughs> Super. So let me get some more. I love now. the creative problem solving of getting models. That's great. Yeah, because... Uh, I'd love to go all the car shows and everything, but uh, I can't get out of this. So. <laughs> right, let's take a last big dollop of organic vermilion. And from here, it is a bit orangey. Yes, it's, it's 
and orange leaning onto the reds. Uh, and then we get a nice big dollop off. Yeah. So, uh, so you're mixing um, a transparent color with a yes. non-transparent color. Yeah. So let's get this going. Let's make it put it back down here. It'll take a while, but you'll see. Um, it'll come up beautifully. That's going to take a while to separate. Show me the paper around. Is, is that soft pressed paper? More? It's a uh, cold pressed. Um, I mean, cold, cold pressed. No. Yeah, uh, uh, Fabriano Artistico. Yeah, no, no, could you it. bring it closer to the camera, please? Sure. Let me just get some more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There. there we go. Uh-huh. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Let's see what other colors coming up. Uh, Lucy is asking if you have done any antique cars. Uh, not terribly many because, and oopsie, I because do love you don't get them in the games. <laughs> they they but more they so detailed. <laughs> it's um, you, how you you approach them. Is you got to be more loose with an, uh, with a, a classic car to me because they got just so much detail in them, um, and uh, especially when you speak to the uh, aficionados, they are so particular about getting all the details right. Can you see that now? See how the satellite and separating. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll also take some um, of the Thaler yellow. I'll show you that. Let's just get that brush a bit more. And I'll mix it with a bit of the of my maroon. Which one is this? This is Naphthamar Maroon and Thalo Yellow. Wow. And you can see which is the bossy color. Wow. Yeah. They're just so complimentary and uh, they mix lovely. So yeah, those are pretty good for uh, landscape. Bossy color. Anna Candela says bossy color. Yes, very bossy. I do like the bossy color sometimes. Like the Aussie red gold is a bossy color. As well? Uh, oh, yeah. Yep. And the bismuth bandidates as well can be quite bossy as well. Oh, yes. Bismuth, yes, very much. Thanks. 
Mark, I'd love to see the um, soda light by itself a little bit right next to the the um, organic sure. vermilion. Sure. Um, just a massage, I mean. Beautiful, thank you. Gorgeous. Yeah. It's just when that meets, it's just a beautiful experience. I don't know about you, but sometimes I wish I could just hit pause on the painting and say stop there because the, the, the mixes are just perfect. Uh, yeah, some, sometimes the occasion comes up like that. But they seem to have a mind of their own sometimes. Yes, they do. And uh, that was, that was an education for me because, uh, I mean, when I started um, with watercolors when I was, when I was doing study architecture and uh, we had uh, architectural illustrations and we started with watercolors and um, I got bought all my watercolors and I was getting so frustrated because these colors weren't doing what I wanted them to do. And uh, it was so frustrating and I gave up watercolors for... Really? many, many years until I realized that, hey, you know, watercolors, you know, you, you play with them, you, you, you can't, you can't, they're like children. <laughs> they, 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 you can, you know, you can guide them and everything and you can make them do wonderful things, but you can't force them like you can with acrylics or oils. So, <laughs> True. A bit of an education for me. We have a question uh, by Svetlana. She says, does Mark have a favorite mix with Serpentine Genuine? Um, my favorite with Serpentine Genuine is the Organic Vermilion. Okay. Yeah. Complimentary, right? Yeah. Cool. If there's any other mixes I can mix up. Any requests? On Facebook, Susan Little is asking for phthalo yellow green and napf maroon. She's saying they're beautiful together. Oh, she's that she's commenting on what you've already done. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, they're beautiful. Spray some water them too. Do you use any of these colors in sticks? In the sticks, I have these ones. Those are the actual ones that I use. So, but if you see my my half pans, yes, basically taking the stick and I've cut them up and then and, and put them in the half pan. All right. Um, and the other way I use them is that I will take the stick. Maybe I can show you now. And we'll, but I'll move these across here. Like, let's take, uh, which one should we take? Here we go, soda light. I will take the soda light, I'll take some, a little bit of water. This is a bit there. I'll take the stick and I will literally grind it into the water, very much as you would do with an ink stick. Mm. Wow. And that way I can get a mix as rich as I want. If I continue mixing like this, I can get it up to the consistency as you get out of a tube, or even mm -hmm. even more pasty than that if you want. Yes. So and you would get a piece of paint from the tube in that sense. Yeah. And that is how I use the sticks in um, for uh, the abstract landscapes. Because in the abstracts, I will typically apply um, the paint with either a, a credit card or um, a spatula. Oh, okay. Mark, I really enjoy your Instagram series. Uh, is it called Thursday Threes Company or three Thursday Threes? Yes, that's right. Yes. I really enjoy that. So if anybody is loving these mixes, 
go over to Mark's Instagram. I think you can just search his name and it'll pop up. And every Thursday he does three colors mixed together and they're so fun. Really? Yes, I agree. There you go. Wow. Excellent. Um, this is not typically my spatula, <laughs> which oh. I apply paint on. And then you can play with the paint. Mm -hmm. Oh, so creative. It's like what a, a great idea. <laughs> is that a, a tool that you can buy at an art store? Actually. You can buy this at a uh, dollar store. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. That's the part of uh, like a spatula for cooking. Isn't yes, it? exactly. I've just taken it off the, uh, <laughs> the and uh, so I use that. Thank you for the tip. He's serving up color. Very cool. nice. Thank you, Mark. That's wonderful. Thank you. I love your cars too. Well, thanks, John. Nice job, Mark. Nice job. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Mark. Mark. Very good. Cool. Thank yeah. you, Mark. Very interesting. All right, Jonathan. Hello. Yes. Good job, Mark. <laughs> thanks, Jonathan. Great job, Mark. Yeah. My turn? Yes, your turn now, Jonathan. Okay. Hello to everyone and thank you. Thank you, Madam Angela, for the short notice uh, presentation. I'll do my best. Yes. You are yes. the best, Madam. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so thanks, John, uh, for the uh, dot card. I'm switching the camera. So okay. welcome. Yeah, it's good enough. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I was to select uh, 18 colors for my palette, even though it was a, a big uh, decision and choice to, to make, but I have to select what I mostly use for my uh, paintings. So I selected uh, Jonathan. Hello? Excuse me. Uh, is your, uh, your is your camera fixed to the to the stand? Uh, yeah. Let me fix that quickly. It would be wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, Jonathan and Jonathan's dot car, he's just received it. He received it in Rochmore. So it was very good. Um, so these are brand new, these dot cards. We have been enjoying them. Yeah. So is it okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I just received my dot card. Thanks to everyone and Mother Angela. So I have here a uh, yellow orca. Uh, we don't it's... see a bit, a bit, um, uh, not so near the camera now. Yes, a bit to the left. Yes, mm. and, and a bit more separate. Yes, lovely. Down okay. a bit, down a bit. Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So Basically, my choice of colors was selected based on uh, where I live in, in Africa and the kind of atmosphere around me is what informed my selection of uh, these colors. So, for example, with the yellow orca, it, it helps me to blend with the, the raw sienna, 
when doing uh, like the natural uh, earth colors for uh, rusty buildings, the grounds, and uh, uh, the sand. You know, these are all earth colors that I like to, to use. So on my dot card, I have yellow ochre, answer yellow Jonathan, lamp. Jonathan, uh, I think we cannot see it. If you left it on the table, maybe we could see it better. It's it, far, but yeah, it's far? a little bit, okay. but it moves a lot, you know. Yeah, it's that's bad. perfect, but up, up a bit. Up a bit, okay. No, no, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, a bit Don't... more. Yes, okay. that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so... I have a uh, answer yellow light is very good when I'm showing more of uh, a sunny, a sunny day. You know, Africa is is very hot with where I live. The, the temperature is, is uh, very hot. So mostly I use the yellow ochre to depict the, the sunny, the sunny day and uh, to get the brightness uh, in, in my painting. Same goes for the Arulian uh, cobalt yellow. These are all the shades of ranges of yellows that I selected for the same effect, trying to create a sunny uh, atmosphere in my paintings. And then for the cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, and cobalt blue, uh, it's more for the sea. I use it. For, for the sea. And also, uh, when I'm painting, I don't use one color for my blues in my painting. I infuse two or more blues in my colors. So when people see it, they, they get a bit fascinated exactly what color of blue is this. You And because of my selection, if you look at the details put behind here that shows the characteristics of the colors, transparency, which shows uh, an empty circle, semi-transparency also shows half, and then the opaque. These are yeah. very important uh, information when you are selecting uh, your choice of colors. So if you noticed, cerulean blue is semi-transparency, and the ultramarine blue indicate that it's pure transparency here. And the cerulean, uh, the cobalt blue also shows semi-transparency. So when I'm painting and I, uh, I take the ultramarine blue, for example, uh, it helps me when mixed with cobalt blue to have the transparency effect reflecting through the, the semi-opaque of cobalt blue. So this information is very, very important when selecting uh, the, the colors to know the strength of transparency or semi-transparency or opaque. Same goes for the pythalo blue. More to the left, please. More to the left. Yes. More, a bit more. Yes. Yes. To the my pythalo blue is very, very also. So if you notice, my selection of colors goes with complementary each other, the same family. I have the yellow family, the, the blue family, different shades of it. And then... Blue? Do you mix thalo blue with the other blues also? Yes, yes. I don't mix just one blue. I always mix two or three blues in one painting. Yeah, which is very good because... It does. The moment you start to use just one blue, it it limits the viewer's way of looking at the painting. But when the you mix two or three blues together, it gives it a, an amazing effect of how to look at the blue. Mm -hmm. And then same goes for the pilo red and permanent arizon uh, crimson. These are all shades of uh, red, and they are very good when you combine them. And this 
Kenakridon Deep Gold helps me to infuse uh, these two uh, pyro red and permanent arizon crimson together. So there are some special colors I selected, which helps me to, I like to infuse colors a lot in, in my paint. I don't just use uh, just red and then it is red. No, there should always be something uh, mixed with it. It's like uh, putting your spices to cook. You, you don't just take one spice and then that is it. You, you always have to blend it with, with something. So I use this a lot to infuse the red colors here. And as I said earlier on, the raw sirena, the yellow orca, these are all earth-related colors for the ground, the sun, rocks, etc. When you are painting based on where I live. And then the bent tiger eye, this also with its darker look in nature, they helped me to get a stronger dark when mixed with a lunar black for the skin tone I used in the painting because basically we are dark in Africa. So this Ben Tiger, Tiger's Eye helped me to achieve that effect because I cannot just use lunar black in a painting. I have to infuse it uh, uh, to get the right skin tone that I want in the in my painting. And then moving to uh, Pytolo Yellow Green and Sub Sub Green is for the same result. I infuse them together, and that makes my painting more interesting. When you look at my paintings, the the green, I don't just pick green. And I put, I always have to mix it with, with a complementary color. So these two, they, they go hand in hand, sometimes with the help of uh, yellow light uh, 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 infused together. So basically I infuse a lot of colors when I'm, when I'm painting. And then uh, I'll come back to lavender. That, that is why I left it at the latter part. Um, if you look at, I have a Chinese white. There is also titanium white. You can use any of them. I use this titanium white, uh, sorry, the Chinese white to uh, create the atmosphere uh, in my painting because uh, most of the time there's a lot of atmospheric in the fishing community and the, and the sea and also creating depth and perspective. So you kind of have a hazy uh, atmosphere, especially in the background. So this Chinese white helps me to have that effect uh, in my painting. So this new gambage color also helps me to complement the uh, the browns and the yellows when when I'm when I'm working, and for the lavender here is good for uh, sometimes I use it for focal point. So I may have a painting, and the lavender helps me to have a special uh, focal point in in a painting. So it's very good, and it's also good for highlight and decorating of the painting and all of that, yeah. So basically this is my choice of colors from Daniel Smith that I use. Uh, I'll show you samples of my works in, uh, in a minute. Yes, that will be lovely. Thank you, it's very interesting. Okay. So we have I this have painting. To, you have to put them on the table, Jonathan, otherwise we don't see it. Yes, up a bit, please. No, 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 not up towards the camera, but upwards. Upwards. Up towards the top of the desk. Yes, because we cannot see 
Uh, we only see the the sky. We don't see the 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 full painting. Yes, better. Yes, better. Okay. Yeah. So if you notice here, this figure, I highlighted it with the lavender uh, color to stand out in the painting as my focal point out of all these figures in that. You could see that I used the lavender to highlight this figure. So it holds the viewer's eye around the painting. And then if you look at the left side here, you see an atmospheric effect. Some part is the white of the paper, and some part is infused with the, the Chinese, the Chinese white to help me get this effect. This painting basically is more atmospheric in, in, in the settings here. And on the right side also is the infusion of the sub green that I mentioned earlier on. And then the Pytolo yellow uh, green to have this result here. So the viewer is not just looking at a boring uh, green. There should always be something infused to have an interesting green uh, when looking at the work. Jonathan, I want to read a comment that you got from Maureen. She said, I see that with your dot card choices and your description of how you choose each color, you're not only see them, you feel the colors. So that is such a strength. How wonderful. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And the, uh, the Daniel Smith colors are, are very, very good with high transparency, which I love very much. So I'm very happy there is this information to make it easier for for selection of uh, a good transparency and opaque colors from Daniel Smith. Yeah, so as I said, these are the, the browns, the browns in the painting, the Ross Yana, the bent tiger eye, the yellow orchids, these are all infused in my painting. And then the, I have the lunar black mixed with uh, Ben Tiger for the darker details of the electric pose and all of that. Same goes to the atmosphere here with the Chinese white infused. And, and then sometimes I leave part of the paper untouched to have a stronger uh, smoky effect. This one is beautiful. It's one of my favorite paintings of yours. Thank you, Mother. Same for me too. So in this particular painting also. Uh, uh, Jonathan, just a moment. Um, it, you have to separate it a little bit more from the camera. Separate it a little. Okay. Yes. Better? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So for this painting, I used uh, the Hansa yellow light as, as my base. And you know, because of the high transparency, when you put another color on it, they are able to, to reflect through, you know. So if you if you look closely, you will see that there is a base color first. Same as here. Here, you know. So this gives you uh, a nice uh, atmosphere background to, to start with laying your colors on and then they will reflect through you know and then for the final result you can also drop in uh, some yellows in the darker area and you still get a good result here 
especially when the base is dry. You can build on the colors and they don't get muddy like acrylic paint, painting. You know, and for the blues, when you go with one wash for the sky, you are able to have a very nice uh, sky. Uh, and for the skin tone of this black man, what colors did you use? Yeah, I used the uh, the bent uh, tiger eye, and then yes. I infused it with uh, raw sienna for the first uh, application, and then I built the darker side with the lunar black. Uh huh. For the okay. hair. Oh yes. Yes. And the arms is the burnt tiger's eye and rosiana. Yes. Right? yes, mixed with benciana, infused with benciana. Oh wow. Very beautiful. Very Thank beautiful. you. Uh, sorry, all the works are full shape. That's why I'm having a little space to, to show everything. So forgive me for that. <laughs> Now, this is also uh, the same effect that I use uh, for, for this work. So you see that my technique runs through the same in, in everything that I do. I, I follow a particular formula for most of my painting, especially the, the landscapes. I only change it when I'm doing figurative work is when I, I do, I use a different approach for figurative work, but mostly for my landscapes, they all have a particular uh, formula or pattern that I use to achieve my, my results. Very, very beautiful, Jonathan. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then, as I mentioned earlier, this is like a small hilly uh, mountain with some rock. I used the bent tiger eye infused with uh, raw uh, sienna, you know, and then a little bit of uh, lunar black for the stronger area. And then the Chinese white to pick out the, the highlights and also the red, the Pilo red is very good for highlighting the, the focal point uh, in, the, in the painting. And then, as I said earlier also, you could see the base color of this boat has the Hansa yellow here as the first uh, wash for the base. So because of the good transparency, when you build another color on it, it doesn't make the work look like a very thick application of acrylic paint. You still have the watercolor effect you are still looking for, you know. Yes, very transparent. Yes. And, uh, yes, beautiful effect, yeah. Yeah. Jonathan, what I find really powerful is your direction of light and and the, your contrast with your light and dark and how you put that, just leave that white highlight on those figures. That's very, very powerful. Very much so, yes. So mostly these are all the bent family, the bent tiger eye, the raw sianas, you know, these are all the results. And for this particular painting, I infused the colors of the, the blue family. I infused them. And these are the white of the paper. So I use the dry brush technique here. And also the greens, I infuse the greens and, and all of that. Fantastic. John, Jonathan, do you mind spending a little bit more time talking about what you mean by the word infused. We have Carol who's asking, when he says he infuses the colors, does that mean not totally mixing thoroughly? 
so that they are some parts of the mix from each color individually and part of the mix totally infused together. And then yeah, Svetlana so, uh, continued, was... one, one moment and I'll give you all the time. <laughs> then Svetlana okay, continued so, and says, does infusing mean mixing on paper, mingling of paint or pre-mixing on palette? Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. So what I mean in infusing is that the moment, for example, I lay the color, it's the so wet. So whilst it is so wet, I quickly drop in another color to infuse so that they are not like one dry before the other comes. And you don't mix them on the palette, right? I, I, I pre-mix them on the color to have the main color I want. So for example, I want a darker uh, boat color here. As soon as I pick it from the palette, so I'll do a quick demonstration uh, to, to show how what I mean by infusing the colors. Is that yes. okay? Uh, please, yes. We would love to see that. Okay. Is it okay? Can you see? Yes, we yes. can see perfectly. Thank you. Okay. So this is my, my palette. So for example, um, okay, so for example, this is a boat. I'm using a bent uh, tiger eye with some touch of uh, bent amber. So, so this is a boat. So once it is still uh, wet, I can decide to drop in ultramarine blue leave leave the page leave the page down 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 you see yes thank you yeah so once it is so wet you drop in your color it helps to infuse with the previous one which is so wet And then at this point also, you can also, for example, pick uh, Luna, uh, sorry, Lavender. With the Lavender, I can use it to create some highlight effect on the boat. So you see it's running on the paper. So the edges are not static, they, they are soft. And could you show us how you do the water, please? with the two or three blues okay so for example this is a tree right so we have a tree here now it is still dry it's sorry it's still wet you see because it's still wet I want a darker shade. I took, take a lunar black, mix it with raw uh, amber or sienna. I go like this once it is still wet. So they start to infuse into the previous uh, color, which is still wet. So yes. the edges are always soft, not hard edges. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. So that's what I mean by infusing uh, the colors. Thank you. Very well explained. Yeah. Thank you. I love seeing the confidence in your brush brush mark making. It's it just comes yeah. across so well. Thank you. Very confident brush strokes. Yes. Yeah. So talking about the greens. So to 
in order not to have a boring green, if you look closely, you will see the shades, the shades in the green. Some part look like a pitolo yellow green, sub green, and a hint of yellow in somewhere. Because all of these are high transparency colors. So that is why I'm able to have this effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in the greens, you see various shades of colors in the green, not just one green, different shades of green. Yes. And same goes for the blues. You could see some cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue in somewhere. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Beautiful, you, Jonathan. Very, very nice. Mark, thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Thank you, both of you. And the last yeah. one also, you could see the Hansa yellow light, which I use as the base for, for the first application. So it is able to reflect through, even though you put another color on top, but it's able to reflect through because of the transparency uh, characteristics the, the colors have. Mm -hmm. Nice, very wonderful. Wonderful, Jonathan. Wonderful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you to thank you to both of you. Thank you already for joining today. Um, I hope you can join us tomorrow for our um, artist tomorrow. If not, I wish you a great weekend. Hopefully, you're finding some place cool. Um, and thanks for joining. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.